that clap has pretty much caused my ears to uh, produce dynamic range compression. Hey, it's Anfa. <laughs> Have you heard the news? Ardor 6 has been released after what feels like three years since the last version. They've got the newest one out. You know what? I think the camera is a bit. That's better. Oh, that's much better. So, uh, on Ardor's website, you can find uh, an article about the new release and uh, there's uh, all the different stuff listed there. There's a very big change log, but the most important things they are mentioning are as follows. First, the whole signal path is perfectly latency compensated now. Previously in order 5 and before, the latency compensation, as they say, was a bit spotty and didn't like work ideally in all contexts and yeah I mean that they mentioned this is a big big point and I get it it's important so to me as a as an end user that's probably not gonna be a life changer I don't really think that much of latency compensation when I work but there's other things that I do think about and what I do think about is for example crash recovery you see one of the most important things to me that happened in Ardor 6 versus Ardor 5 is that the crash recovery or periodic backup system has been fixed uh, because you know Ardor is pretty good at making sure you never lose anything that you recorded in terms of audio but when it comes to working with MIDI or automation lanes or changing effect patches I have experienced data loss a few times and it's really painful like I think that one of the worst things that creative software can do is f over your work that just kills the soul of an artist that's why I've been pushing uh, autosave to be on by default in LMMS for example because they had it and it works but you need to first turn it on and if you first make a clean install and you start working and it crashes and you lose your data, then you cry. So finally they made it on by default. If Autosave even costs me extra performance, I don't care. I want to be safe. I want my projects to exist. So Ardor 6 fixes uh, some Autosave problems, uh, namely that it doesn't always work. Now it should be fine, uh, but I still have to battle test it. I haven't been doing too much work with the newest, newest release. I've been using some almost final versions and I've been checking some bigger work projects. For example, I have an order session with like 250 sound effects for a game I've been working on for a client. And I've opened this up in order six recently and excluding a few sound effects that didn't want to export at all, it seemed to work okay. And when I fiddled around with real-time rendering and I restarted it once and it finally exported them, then when I compared the files exported from Ardor 5 and the ones exported from Ardor 6, opening the same session, I didn't notice any problems. So that's good because, you know, if you're migrating to a new version of software, uh, the last thing you want is like to do it and then realize everything is broken. And you can't go back. Especially if you're doing client work and you need to have it done fast and you can't like spend an extra five hours just fixing stuff you already had done. So if that would be the case, I'd rather wait and keep using Ardor 5 for these projects. I mean, when I'm doing my own stuff, I don't care. I, I don't care. I, okay, that's not like I don't care, but when I'm doing my own stuff, it's not such a big problem because Sometimes even errors and bugs lead to some interesting creative decisions because, for example, uh, Ardor mistakenly broke a MIDI region and it was not playing and that made me consider, huh, maybe I will mute it in this part and like let it come in later. And that actually proven to be an interesting arrangement. Of course, it's not that I want something like that to happen, it's that sometimes you can turn it into something good. Another thing I've noticed about Ardor 6 uh, is that the plugin manager has been really, really changed. 
and it's, it looks not much nicer. I've also read that you can now add custom tags to plugins and that other comes with like extensive tag list for like 300 different plugins. I wonder if these are LV2 like open source plugins or commercial plugins or both. I don't know, I haven't seen that yet. But it seems like there, there is an option to like better organize the plugins you want to use or don't want to use. When I've been using the, this version 6 like two months ago, I reported a few bugs that were really irritating and like broke my work that I've been doing with Ardor 5. But when I checked it out like last week, I couldn't reproduce any of the bugs. So I think they fixed that all. Another great thing I think what they did is they changed how Ardor treats MIDI device input. For example, before in Ardor 5, if you wanted to um, use your MIDI keyboard to play an instrument track, you would have to arm it for recording and make sure that it has the appropriate MIDI input selected. And only then you would press a key and hear something. Sometimes you also would have to turn on input monitoring instead of playing, playing whatever is on disk. So there was a quite a lot of stuff you had to do to just touch a note and hear it, or if you want to record. Now it's much easier because you can select uh, MIDI input devices in the global order preferences and you can make these devices uh, provide input automatically to any MIDI track that you select in the editor. So you can simply select a MIDI track, press a key on your keyboard and voila, you've got sound. And you can also record just like that. So this is great because there's gonna be no more fiddling with MIDI inputs and reassigning that and arming the tracks and making sure that monitors and what if you're recording and what if you're not recording and yeah, they also introduced something that they call queue monitoring. Basically before in order 5 and before you could either listen to what is being fed into the track from microphones or maybe a MIDI keyboard or you could listen to what's already captured on disk but not both and now you can do both. Now one thing I'm not very fond of is how they changed the time grid display. In order 5 I can clearly see where are the beats when I zoom in to edit my MIDI. In order 6 so far, that is a problem. I, the the beat, beat lines are not emphasized and so what ends up happening is that I start counting the beats from the bar line because I can't see which beat am I just hovering my mouse over right now, which is kind of silly and that really slows down my MIDI work. So I hope they address this quickly. I have already reported an issue in Ardor Bug Tracker about this. Also, another interesting thing that they mentioned in the release notes is that they've been revamping the, the Vary Speed playback. Vary Speed is the functionality of dynamically changing the speed of audio playback so you can use other like a tape machine, like slow things, speed them up, play them backwards. <laughs> and they said that before it wasn't very flexible and now what they've done is revamped it and made it better so that possibly in the future, Ardor could be sample rate agnostic. Just like Audacity. Because you see, right now, if you create an Ardor session, that Ardor session is going to be created with a determined sample rate. Uh, and that's gonna be the, the sample rate that you set up in your audio interface when you create the session. So for example, if your Jack server is running at 48 kilohertz and you create a session, that session will be created with 48 kilohertz. And all audio that you record in it will be sampled at 48 kilohertz. And all audio that you bounce and all the processing inside will be at 48 kilohertz. If you ever want to import a file at a different sample rate than, than that sample rate of your session, it'll have to be resampled before it can be imported, or uh, it will play back at the wrong speed. Wrong speed. Which I think is understandable because having the program like, you know, resample all audio files on the fly is probably gonna be CPU intensive. For example, that's why I would not record my audio into FLAC files directly and then playback from FLAC files, because that would require quite a lot of CPU power. You know, maybe it's not much when we're talking about one, three tracks, but when you start doing going with 40, 50 tracks, it's probably gonna adapt pretty quickly. 
and maybe it's better to just use more disk space and a dumb PCM format like WAVE instead of using that smart flag compression but uh, forcing the CPU to do more work. However, that's interesting, they have also enabled FLAC as a format for all the audio interchange, which I think is cool to, to be able to do, because maybe sometimes you're very low on hard disk space, and but you have plenty of processing power, and you can do that. I haven't tested it, don't know how it works, don't know how it performs, might be cool. Another nice thing is that you can finally import and export MP3s. Yay! But about the sample rate independency, uh, I think that would be really cool if we could just stop caring about sample rates. The biggest problem I have with this is that if you create an error session, for example, I work on 48 kilohertz, and I want to send my project to someone else and collaborate with them, and they work in 44.1. Now they have to stop their JAX server and start it at a different sample rate to be able to open up my project without everything going completely sideways. I'm looking forward to that, but well, they just said that they laid groundwork, so it's not a feature that's already there. Okay, I think that's enough for this video. Go to ardor.org and check out the detailed release notes. Uh, let me know if you already knew that Ardor 6 is out or if you didn't know. By the way, I have an Ardor 6 quick start guide. It's going to be a longer video showing the process of starting Ardor for the first time and creating a, sh a short project, a short podcast project, I would say, from start to finish. So I think that should be pretty helpful for new users. What are you doing? It's go time. Oh, I forgot. Thanks for watching and uh, also big thanks to all the people who support my work financially. If you, dear viewer, would also like to uh, join them and uh, help keep this show going, please go to patreon.com slash anfa or liberapay.com slash anfa uh, where you can give me a buck or two every month. Go get out and make some music. Bye.